This afternoon, I counted an honor to stand here, and I'm going to talk to you about overcoming offenses. I said, I'm going to talk to you about overcoming offenses or breaking the fence of offense. Say breaking the offense of offense. Overcoming offenses. Please put Luke chapter 17 on the screen for me. Luke chapter 17. Can we all read? And when we read, and kindly please be on your feet. Just one, two, four. Amen. Luke chapter 17. Let's all read. Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Then verse 3, take heed of you, to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Father, this is your word. We pray that you will minister to us, O oh God, through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. The foundation of every human existence is in one thing, and that one thing is relationships. Relationships will either make or unmake you. It's very, very important to take our relationships very, very seriously. It is the foundation of our existence. You and I come from a relationship. We have parents, we have friends, we have family members, and all that. You know, some of us are married, and so it's our relationship. And so that is the basic or foundation of existence. And if something is like that, then we have to take very good care of that. Then we have to protect it. We are created for two kinds of relationships. One, relationships with our Heavenly Father as God. And then the second part is relationship with others. When you read the Ten Commandments, you realize that even God himself, when he gave the commandments, he kind of channeled it through, you know, for, for dealing with the relationship with him, God, and then the rest dealing with the relationship to my, with others. The first four of the commandments is you shall, the first commandment is you shall not have other gods before me. That's what God said. You shall not have other gods before me. It means don't, don't, don't worship any other god, me, myself. You know God is a jealous God. He wants us to worship only him. The second commandment is that you shall not make for yourself a carved image. Don't create any other image and worship that image. But me, God, just serve me. Worship me. Number three, you shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. The way some of us, everything, Jesus, every, I, mean, I mean, even when we, <laughs> let me leave it right there. But don't take the name of God in vain because it is, the Bible says that at the mention of Jesus, every knee bows and everything, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. So there is power in the name of Jesus. Don't take it lightly. Number four, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. So all these talks about relationship with God. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Set that time aside for God and worship him. Then the next six deals with relationship with others. So the fifth commandment says that honor your father and mother. So he's talking about relationship with your parents. So it's very important to have good relationship with our parents. Amen. Amen. Did we hear that? Amen. Very important. Honor your father and mother. It didn't say honor them when they are good to you or they are nice to you or when they are treating you well. It says honor them. When you go to, I think Ephesians talks about the father. It is the only commandment with a blessing that when you honor your parents, your father and your mother, God grants you long life. So it's very important. And then commandment number six, you shall not murder. Commandment number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Commandment number eight, you shall not steal. Commandment number nine, you shall not bear witness, false witness. And then number ten, you shall not covert. However, the biggest attack in life is against relationships. Relationships in the families, relationships in the churches, relationship in our marriages, and 
you know, every kind of relationship that we find ourselves in. And we realize that many people in the church are very stagnant now because of broken relationships, because we feel deceived, we feel rejected, we feel betrayed. And so a lot of us are stagnant and we are not moving ahead. And we end up accusing other people and pointing fingers. But when you look into it, it is because of broken relationships and because of the things that we went through. And so this morning, I believe God sent me here to talk to you in so that we will know how we can liberate ourselves from this fence of offenses that we find ourselves in and release ourselves to do great exploits. Amen? So that is my charge here this morning, that we will recognize it, release ourselves out of it, and be able to do great exploits. Amen. And so the narrative, the narrative talk about, please put it, put it on, back on the screen, Luke chapter 17, the verse 1 says that Jesus said to his disciples, it is impossible to, it is, it is impossible that no offenses should come. It means that whatever we do, so far as we are human beings, and we engage with people, and we contact people, and we get to talk to people, offenses may come. Interestingly, sometimes maybe your smile may even offend someone. Your face, just your presence offense people. What do you do with that? <laughs> but we know that there is a God on the inside of us. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus started talking about offenses. And he says that as long as we are in a community, offenses will come. We are bound to offend one another. But my emphasis is but woe to him through whom the offense will come. So I might offend you. But woe is me. Woe betides me if I offend you. Because I am accountable to God for offending you. The other side of it is that when you get offended, what do you do with it? So when you, I have offended you, I'm accountable. I mean, I have to account to God for that. And he says that if I offend you, I'm better off, you know, I better not offend you because if I offend you, it's better for me that they put, you know, it's like hang, hang a mouse on my neck and throw me in the sea. It's like I, I don't even deserve to live. That is how strong offense is. Meaning that we don't have to offense each other. Basically, I think that's what they're saying. And then he says, take heed. If your brother offends you or sins against you or does something against you and they come, they repent and they, they ask for forgiveness. He said, forgive them. It doesn't matter how many times they come. Forgive them. Offenses are bait. And that's where it all begins. I give an illustration of, I don't know if you know how the trap that we use to catch the mouse and all that. How many of us know that? I don't know if the technology-wise or the modern age, we have a different way of catching mouse. I don't know. But you know that, do you have a picture of something like that? But you all know that what I'm talking about, right? I think I should have gotten one of those. If you want, you know it, right? And then you have to put the cheese. <laughs> the cheese. And the innocent mouse that is hungry is looking for food to eat. So they're coming to eat the cheese. And the moment they get the cheese, the trigger goes off and the mouse gets trapped. You, you understand where I'm coming from? And that is what happens with offenses. In our daily life, we get trapped. We get bait. The cheese. The cheese comes in different forms. The cheese can be how somebody is talking to you. The cheese can be, you know, somebody smiling at you. The cheese can be somebody saying negative things to you, something that you don't want to hear. The cheese can be anything, but it's a trap. And so when you fall, in, when you get that bait, the trigger goes off and you get trapped. And that's what happens. You get offended. And that offense is the trap. Because when the mouse gets trapped, it can't free itself. And if it doesn't even take care, they die. I don't want to go ahead of myself. So I will walk you through that. So now I want you to watch out for baits all around you so that you don't fall into it. 
What does offense mean? What does it mean? To offend in a Greek, is a Greek word, scandalizo. The Greek word, scandalizo. And the word means a stumbling block. It's a snare. It's a trap. It's a bait. And so the term refers to the trigger on the trap. So anytime the trigger goes off, you get trapped. In the New Testament, it means that anything that hinders someone from doing what is right or causes one to sin or fall away from the faith. This means that offenses will cause you to fall away from your faith if you don't deal with it. Offenses will come, but woe to the one through which the offense comes. I don't want to be the one that is linked to the woe. So I pray that we will all make sure that we will not be a stumbling block in the face of our brethren, of our sisters, of our brothers, but be able to be a helper, be able to hold hands with them and we'll grow with them. We will not be the one that will cause anyone to fall out of faith. Hallelujah. So offenses, it's like a seed. Or they are like a seed. A little seed. When you drop it, you water it. It gets root. And so when you, you sow that seed of offense, somebody comes to tell you something about another sister. Somebody comes to gossip about something. Somebody says anything. What do you do with that information that you get? And so you have to be mindful. Anybody, Pastor Frank said it, that anybody that has your ear has the ability to form you. Because when you allow whatever, you are formed by what you hear. Tell me you are not formed by what you hear. You hear things and before you realize you are bubbly, you are okay. But you hear something before you realize your whole attitude has changed. Maybe even if you were here in the first service or you, you be among a group of friends. You'll be happy, laughing and all that. Then you hear something. Your countenance changed and all that. And before you realize, you are going down. Offenses does not just happen. It is a process. And so we have to guard against it. So I start with offenses are like a seed. They grow and they become hatred. They become anger, bitterness, even murder. Offenses can lead you to adultery and any kind of evil in our lives. When you get so much offended, you, you tend not to even care about anything. I pray that we will not get to that point in Jesus' name. I want us to guard our hearts. The Bible says, and I think Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, I think so. Proverbs 4 23, talks about the fact that guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of lust. So guard your heart with all diligence. All diligence, with all intentions, because out of it spring forth the issues of life. It means that if your heart is not good, what will come out of your heart? If you don't guard your heart, if you are hurt, if you are embittered, if, if, if your heart is not right, it means everything that will come out of your heart won't be right. And so protect your heart. Don't allow certain things to get into your ears. You know yourself more than anybody apart from God. And so if you realize that when you hear certain things, it will disturb you, don't get yourself in that. If you realize that this particular friend, anytime I get around him or her, the things that I hear pushes me down. You have to advise yourself. Because other than that, by the time you are done with that individual, you are so offended. And in the morning, I talked about borrowed offense. Where... The person didn't offend, I didn't offend you. But because I offended your friend, you are offended. And you won't talk to me. You won't smile with me. You won't even look at my face. In actual fact, you don't even want to breathe the same air around me. Why? Because you are offended. And sometimes it's not because of anything. Just because I offended your friend. But I pray that you will know that one day you will stand before God. And so it is not about your friend, it's about you. And let alone, you know, how are you living your life? You want to be a woman of exploits. You want to be a man of exploits. You want to do great exploits. If you are getting offended by what people say and what people do, how are you going to grow? If you go to work and your, your, your boss does something and you get so offended 
that you don't want to talk to him, how are you going to get your promotion? You won't. But it's very interesting. When we go to work, we can take everything that they tell us. But when you come to church, you can't take anything. Isn't that interesting? The house of God. Some of us are even offended with God. God himself. Because he didn't do the things that we wanted. Sometimes our losses. We lose loved ones. And you have every cause to be upset. But the Bible says that do not let the, the sun fall down on your anger. It means you can be upset or angry. But don't go, let the whole day go without it. And don't sin in that anger. So for me, don't be angry at all. So this will happen. But learn to manage your emotions. Amen. Amen. Learn to manage your emotions. Because relationships will take you far. Actually, relationships would make or make you. You might think you don't need anybody, but it will get to a time where you need people. And so you don't know, I say this all the time, you don't know who I'm going to meet. Maybe you think that, okay, I'm with Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike does something I don't like it, so I'm not going to be good to Pastor Mike. And you, 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 you decide not to be nice. So I decide not to be nice with Pastor Mike. But what I don't know is that I'm very nice with Pastor Cooper. And, you know, he's my buddy. And I need Pastor Cooper to help me. I mean, maybe I get some incentives from him. But what I don't know is that Pastor Mike is very good friends with Pastor Cooper. I don't, I didn't, I don't know that. And so maybe Pastor Mike goes to Pastor Can you believe this? This is what this lady is doing. Right there and then, your source has been cut. Your favor has been cut. Your grace has been cut. Why? Because of your relation. We are interconnected and we are interrelated. And so don't always think that you can do whatever you want because you don't know. We are all connected. It's interesting that, I think Pastor Frank was the one who said it, or somebody said that it is, it's very funny or interesting when, or you don't know that the person that you don't like is best friends with, with or, you know, is, is, you know, the person you don't like is best friend with somebody you also like. And so before you realize, you don't like this one, but you realize that they are good friends. And also, what do you do? You, 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 you disconnect from them, but you need them. What are you going to do? Relationships, I'm, all I'm trying to say is that relationships are very, very important. So offenses are a seed. And when you sow a seed, what do you do? You water it, you grow it. And the growing or the watering is the things that we say. The whisperings. The negative things. You go here, you say, some of us, let me generalize it. It's like everywhere you get to, there's commotion. Every ministry you get into, everybody is bad but you. Everybody is mean but you. They don't like me. They are this, they are that. What about you? You move from the choir. You went to what other music? The, the ushers. They are in trouble with me. You move from the choir to the ushers. From the usher to the media. From the media to the to Shakaina. <laughs> to Shakaina. That place where you didn't survive. We will make you a minister. <laughs> it's a calling anyway. You can't be a minister without a calling. But all I'm saying is that you have to work on your relationship because a relationship will make or, um, or make you. If you're not able to work on your relationship now, my dear, wherever you go, you carry yourself. So if you're not able to handle or be able to submit in the choir, you won't be able to submit anyway. Always remember that. It's not always about your leader. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Who are you? What are you capable of and what can you do? Amen? So don't sow offenses. And when you are offended, please. The Bible says, <laughs> I was going to say keep it to yourself. But you can't keep it to yourself, my dear. When you have offended, we will get there. Let it go. Let me go ahead of myself. Let it go. Thank you for that scripture because I was going to come into it anyway. So, so Ephesians chapter 4, verse, verse 26. Let me read from verse 26. It says that, be angry. And, and do not sin. And do not let the sun go down on your... So, for me, this is how I interpret the scripture. It says be angry, but do not sin, right? But you don't know whether when you get angry, you sin or not. So, in a nutshell, right? Do your best not to be angry. Because you don't know... Are you able to control your, your, your emotions when you get angry? You do things and after that you ask yourself, did, did I really... So please don't even get there so that you, 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 you go that path. And then the 27 says that. 
Not give place to the devil. It means that when you get angry, you are giving place to the devil to come in to do his thing. And when you give him a full stool, he will really sit, he will, he will really make a, a seat for himself and sit down. Amen. 28. Move with me, please. Let him who stole still no longer. Hey. But rather, let him labor. Work with your hands and do what is good. That he may have something to give him who has need. Do you understand this scripture? It's not even that you may be able to pay your bills. It says that work with your hands so that you may be able to give to the person who is in need. You don't even work for yourself, my dear. You want to be able to help the needy. So help the needy around you. They don't have to be broken. They don't have to come begging. But the fact that God has blessed you, be a blessing unto your neighbor. Be a blessing. And then 29, I love this scripture because I agree with it. It says, Let, let's all read it. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to your hearers. You can give it to me in another version. And then let me, let me go to Teddy. I'll come back. And he said, when you do this, he said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you've been sealed by the day of redemption. So you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And when you, you let corruptible, I mean, things, negative things, offenses, things that are bad come out of your mouth, you, you, you grieve the Holy Spirit. Go back to 29. You grieve the Holy Spirit. But we pray that we will not grieve the Holy Spirit. It says, do not let no corruptible seed come out of our mouth. I'm talking to the young ones. You yourself, ask yourself. What are the things that come out of my mouth? What, you yourself, ask yourself. Some of you, your head is down. No, lift your head up. <laughs> do not use fouls or... Abusive languages. Some of us, the words that come out of us, they are so abusive. You have a friend, and the things you say to them. Have you created a human being before? Have you, I'm asking you, have you created a human being before? So how dare you tell somebody you are tall, you are short, you are fat, you are skinny, you are thin, you are this, you are that. Have you created a human being before? You are dark, you are light, you, your nose is crooked, your mouth is twisted. Have you created one? However I am, that's how God created me. Yeah. And so I have to appreciate that. Yeah. We're forcing people to be who they are not. And we're forcing people to go under the knife and, be, and do things that they are not supposed to do. Why? Because of the things we say to them. Why can't we encourage each other? Why can't we love one another? Why can't we allow people to be themselves? And love us. Just the way you are. You saw me dark and skinny. Love me like that. Don't marry me and give me pressure. Don't. You knew I was heavy when you were marrying me. Don't come to me like, I mean, I mean go on diet, be skinny, do this, be that. This is how I am. Take me like that. I will work on it, yes. But don't, don't make me feel like I'm less of a human being. No. Don't let me feel like that. This is how God created me, and I'm doing my best. Maybe I'm not able to read that fast. Maybe I'm not able to speak that fluent. Maybe English. Maybe I'm not able to understand this. Maybe it takes me an hour to read and understand. Help me, my dear sister, my dear brother. Help me. Instead of saying, you, you too dumb. You this, you that. No. Don't let any negative words come out of your mouth. It says that let the word that come out of your mouth, let it be an encouragement to those that hear them. Amen. So this day I'm asking you, the words that you speak, does it encourage the people around you? Yes. Just this morning, the words you spoke, did it encourage your audience or the people around you, even from home? Did your words encourage the people or it brought them down? Sometimes we don't know. People are sensitive, Yes. So be careful what you say. Just tell the person next to you, you love them. With the love of the Lord, I beg. With the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. Before I cause trouble for people. With the love of the Lord, other one. <laughs> I'm giving some people some opportunity to say things that they wanted to say. <laughs> Amen. 
So let your word be an encouragement. Jump to verse 31, please. Verse 31, 30 and 31. 31 says, let all, oh, please let's read, let all. It will speak, be put away from you and all. Let all bitterness, let all anger, let all hatred, let all of everything, that negative things, let it be put away. The evil speaking, let it be put away from you. Don't speak evil of each other. Don't speak evil of people. When somebody comes to you and they are speaking evil of another person, tell them, zip it. You've never created a human being before. Maybe the person is going through a stage in their life. Why don't you be a blessing? Why don't you go to that individual and say that what is going on with me, my sister? This is not you. This is not a you I know. What's going on? Come on, my dear. What's going on? But the thing is, we, we, we look down on each other and we say so much that when people are going through stuff, they can't come to you and open up. Why? Because before they end their sentence, as they are talking, you are typing. Before they end the sentence, you send. Before they are done with you, you send. So by the time I come out of the door, everybody here knows my story. But if I wanted them to know my story, I would have taken a microphone and announced it here. But I wanted you, only you to know, so that you will hold my hand in prayer. And so when I come to you and I share my issues with you, hold my hands and pray with me. If I have not given you that permission to go around and share, don't. Let all bitterness... Let them all rough. Let them all anger. A lot of people are angry because of these things. We are angry at each other. We are angry. Not because of anything, but all these little, little things. And so we come to church, we laugh, we smile and all that. But deep inside, we are harboring stuff against each other. I pray that God will deliver us today in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. So offense is like a seed. Number two, offenses are like fences. And I think this morning you put a cage on there for me, if you can put that. It's like a, a, a fence. They cage you. A fence cage you in misery and hurt and pain. You know how a, a fence is like. If you find yourself in the middle of this, it doesn't have a gate to come out and it's very strong. It's, I mean, you want to come. It's very established. You can't come out. You try, you push yourself and you're not able to come out. This is how it is when you are have so much offense in your heart. You are encaged in this. And sometimes you want to come out, but it's so much misery, so much pain, you can't come out. So many of us lie in our beds and we cry at night. And I've said this before, in the morning we come here, we put on our makeup, we are smiling all over, but we are hurting on the inside. And we are encaged, we are in a cage. I pray that by the end of this sermon and by the time we are done praying, that cage will be broken in Jesus' name. And we will have our freedom. Because when you are caged, you are stagnant. You can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. Why? Because you are offended. And the person that offended you, they are going about doing their own thing. They are smiling. They are having their merry way. And you are in the cage crying. You lie in bed. You cry all night. Meanwhile, they are smiling. They are actually having fun. They said they are your ex. And so you are offended they left you. And they moved on with another woman or another man. And you are in bed crying. You are in bed crying. My dear, the crying will not bring him or her back. What you have to do is to pray to God that Lord give me that. Let me let go. Because the thing is that God will not tie your destiny with anybody that will not take you anywhere. If God took them out of your life, it means they don't belong to you. My darling, the right person is coming and that right person will treat you good. That right person will not abuse you. They will not abuse you sexually. They will not abuse you physically. They will not abuse you mentally. They will not even abuse you, I mean, verbally. You are beautiful and you wait for a man to tell you you are nothing. No, you are somebody you bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Covered in the blood. God created you for a purpose. You have to rise and be who God has created you to be. To do exploits. If you are in the cage, how can you do exploits? You can't move. How are you able to do exploits? So rise up. 
jump out of the cage. If you are breaking it and it's not breaking by the end, jump out of it. And we are here to hold your hands to jump. Don't stay in that cage. Don't be offended. Don't cage yourself in. No. Don't let people tell you it's okay. You have to. No, don't even give them that time. Don't, don't give them room in your heart. Don't. They are renting for free. Ah, in this world, who rents for free? Who rents for free? You are staying in that apartment. You are paying rent. And you are letting somebody rent your heart for free. No. That's not a lie. No. Don't allow it. Don't cage yourself in. Hallelujah. Amen. To be offended may not be as hurtful as the offense that by someone who really love and care. Or somebody that you love and care. It hurts so much when you love people and they offend you. But the Bible says that the offense will come. But woe to him or through him that offense comes. So let them offend you. Leave them with God. My dear, when God revenge, eh? it's just sweet. The thing is, we have in our language that sometimes when I'm preaching, this, my language comes to me. Like Pastor would say, it, I have to translate it. But we have an adage in our language that God, eh, he takes his time to throw the stone. I hope I'm saying it right. Right. I got the thumbs up here. God takes his time to throw the stone. But when he throws the stone and that stone hits you, ay, ay, ay. God takes his time he, to throw the stone. It means that God gives you a long rope. God will have time with you. You can be messing around and God has that time with you. So you think that you can go on, you go on. You go on, you do it, and you go on. My dear, before you realize that, that, that same rope that you are on, you will trip on it and when you fall, eh, it, it will be so bad that every, the whole world will know. It gets so bad because there are certain things that we've gotten ourselves involved with and we are being told, stop, stop. We've said it in different kinds of ways. We've sung about it. We've prayed about it. We've danced about it. We say it in different ways. You are still in the thing. You are enjoying it. You know the thing is sin and you are enjoying it. What you don't know is that God will give you a long rope. But then when your cup is full, my darling, I mean, every, I mean the, the, the fall is too great. If you don't take care, you cannot even survive. But thank God he's a merciful God. I pray that whatever you find yourself in, or you see that you're doing that, just not ask God for forgiveness. My dear, God is able to forgive you. He is. The Bible says that he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So I pray that the Lord will help us this morning, that we will be, we will be delivered from that cage that we will not have misery and hurt all our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thirdly, offenses are like foxes. They are foxes. They are foxes. Foxes are omnivores. They eat fruits. They, they eat berries, grass. They eat everything. They are opportunistic. They feed on anything they can find. And the thing is that offenses are like that. Offenses will feed on anything to break you as an individual and then to neutralize that which you need to carry out great exploits. So they will, they will finish you and make sure that you can't be who God has made you to be. That's what offense does to you. You are so offended that the thing is right in front of you. But I mean, you, Eunice has, has the, the, the key to my success. But I'm so offended with her that I won't go to her. Let me suffer. Hey, who suffers? That's what we do. We know the answers. We know God has made a way for us. But we like what we're going through. And so before we realize, we are at places that we're not supposed to be. But I pray that God will lead us the right path. I pray that at the, at the end of this, what offense, whatever, or whoever offended you, you will forgive them. My dear, forgive them and have your liberty. Because at the end of the day, you are the one who will win. I know people that their better halves left them. They thought that nothing would become of them. Today they want to come back. That they can't come back because the level is high. They can't. Don't harbor bitterness. In actual fact, when you harbor offenses, right, it takes your beauty away. You get sick. I mean, you know, but the best thing to show an enemy or to show somebody that had put you down is to succeed. Yeah. 
Yes, I fell. Yes, I went down. Yes, things didn't go my way. Yes, I, I made a mistake, but I am not staying there. At this moment, I'm crying. I don't know what to do, but I am not staying there. I am not going to get offended. I forgive you. You take it. Let it be upon you. But I'm moving ahead because I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Bible says in Songs of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15, it says that catch for us the little forces. The little forces that spoil the vines. So, you know, the little foxes, the little, little things, the foxes, they will spoil the vine. They are in there. They, they, especially in our marriages, the little, little things, the way we talk, the way we say, those little, little things, catch it. Catch it. Don't let it become like a huge something. I did an illustration. I don't know if we could get, we could get those, something like that for us. Amen. And so offenses are the underlying Root for many breakups, many divorces, many church splits, many broken relationships. I mean, we get offended because we are embittered. There's anger and all that. People, we sit in church, we sing, we play, we work, we give, we do all that. Yet our hearts have been so callous with offenses. Offense is the bait Satan I mean, uses to put us in that cage. I pray that God will open our eyes to see that this is an offense. This thing that this person is bringing to me or saying to me, it's a trap. It's a way they want to trap me. And then they will take my, 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 you know, the way, my, my glory. Because sometimes God puts us on a path and we allow ourselves to be offended. And so we're on the right path. But when we get offended, the enemy takes the glory slowly. And it's a gradual process, so you don't know, and it's slow. But this is how it starts. It starts with hurt. So what causes offenses? What are the causes of offenses? One, hurt. Hurt. What causes offenses? Number one, hurt. Words. Hurtful words. Hurtful attitudes. Sometimes the way people will look at you, eh? The way they will size you up and down, the way they will... You yourself, sometimes you wish like the earth would open for you to swallow you up. Sometimes it's misunderstanding. It's misunderstanding a leader. So many times our leader speaks. You know, communication. I may stand here, even as I speak, everybody is interpreting it differently. You are writing it. Even the way you write. The same thing that you write, when you give it to me and I read, I can also interpret it differently. So anytime before you read or write, ask God to give you an interpretation. Like you come to church, look, God, as this word is coming, let it be a minute. Let it minister to me. Because sometimes we misinterpret what the leader is saying, the preacher is saying, our leaders, our various leaders are saying, and we, take, we get offended by that. You get what I mean? And so we easily offended. But I pray that we would not easily be offended. Because when we are easily offended, we open the door for the enemy to come in and create a whole lot of hard work for us. Number two, what causes offenses? Disappointments. Disappointments. And the, and the hurts, you can add this to the hurt could be from a spouse. It could be from a trusted friend. It could be for somebody. You know, I'm just trying to say that anybody can hurt you. Learn to forgive. Learn to open your heart up and forgive when you are hurt. Disappointment. Example is our, you know, our expectations. Our expectations from God. Sometimes we expect you are sick. You expect God to heal you. You get a diagnosis that you, you, didn't, you didn't, you know, you didn't expect. And because of that, you're so angry with God. The God that created you, that gave you life, you are angry with him. Now, when he says, okay, I'm taking my life back, what are you going to do? We get disappointment from others. Somebody said they will do something for you. They were not able to. Remember, they are human beings, right? They are human beings. Sometimes they want to. It's not like, like maybe they don't want to. Sometimes they promise you. And sometimes things does not just work. So give them that grace. Sometimes you are disappointed in yourself. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm so disappointed. I'm like, how could I? I mean, I've tried. I'm trying finishing this course. I try my best. It's not working out. And you feel so disappointed in yourself. But I pray. I come here to remind you that you don't have to be disappointed in yourself. Just keep trying. And one of these days, you'll be able to make it. If you fail an exam, keep trying. Don't, don't stop it. Don't stop. Keep trying. Amen? Another cause of disappointment, I mean, of offense is, is betrayal. 
is betrayer. So you can add that to it. Number three, betrayer. When people betray you, you get you get offended. When when they, I mean, you you entrust people with your secrets and they let it out, you get offended. And it's you know you have every cause to. But please take it easy. Sometimes it's a loss. We lose loved ones and we get offended. That God, why did you take this person? We get offended. And sometimes maybe you lose your health. Sometimes you lose something about you. You get offended. But please, I'm here to let you know that these offenses may come. Like the word of God said, a woe to him through which the offenses came. Offenses, if not dealt with, can lead to all kinds of undesirable results. You become broken, you become bitter, and you become bankrupt on the inside. And that is what it is. You can't so bankrupt on the inside that the same thing that you help to build, you yourself have to break it down. A company that you've built, maybe you built with someone or something that you did, because you're offended, you end up saying bad things about people just to hurt that individual. But what you don't know is that when that company is going down, you're also going down with it. The spouse that you are with, you saw so many bad things about it. The person is a... F O O L. But who married the F O O L? You get me? And so mind your ways. Some of us are walking in camouflage. We laugh, but we are hollow. We relate, but we don't have the trust. We are cynical. We are sarcastic. It's like we are trying. We, we're trying to put a facade, but the thing is not the deep inside. But what we don't know is that God sees us. He knows our heart. So who are we deceiving? I hurt you. Yeah, I didn't mean to. Maybe I haven't even come to my senses to apologize. But you're the better person. Why don't you come to me and say, sister, what you did was wrong. Why don't can't we walk hand in hand and build this kingdom of God together? Why do we have to break it? Why do you have to prove to everybody that, yeah, I am that, you know. Why are you so full of yourself? You want everybody to know that, yeah, they offended you. I will show them that without me, they can't be. Glory to God that God created many human beings. Amen. And it's an honor to do stuff for God. It's an honor to be where you are. People, the thing is that you think you're not doing anything, but a lot of people want to be like you. You don't think you are good, but people want to be like you so bad. And so appreciate yourself. Take one second and appreciate yourself. I want you to appreciate yourself right now. Appreciate yourself. You are beautiful. Look at you. God made you beautiful. Look, you yourself look at you. But you make people talk down on you. No. If you believe yourself, you, you will not allow anybody to, to, to talk down on you. You used to be bubble. Now you are no more bubble. You, you, you are like, you always, you always have a long face. You are like, nobody come close to me. I'm in my own bubble. You know, I want, to be, I want to be by myself, me, myself, and I. I don't want anybody here. You know, right now, I want to draw the line. I want to be. You can't be in an island. You need me. I need you. And so let's work together and let's do the things of God. Hallelujah. And so, yeah, you're putting your hands together. Put your hands together for God. I did a little illustration, and I think I will do it again because... Um, I like, I like, I'm very picturistic, so I like, I like doing stuff like that. So, do I have the people? I just want to demonstrate how, you know, when we get offended. I started by saying that it started with hurts, right? I asked what causes offense. Yeah, any, any of the persons, Pastor Cooper, you can do it. Oh, Pastor Mike, anybody, any of you can do it. Give, 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 give Mr. Bani a break. Don't, don't, don't break his back for him, please. This morning he did his job. Don't break his back for him. Hey, give him a break. I don't want Auntie Aga to come beat me. <laughs> so, look at this handsome guy. What's your name, sweetie? Hi. What's your name? Jill. 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 You're so handsome. You got to believe yourself. A 
and he believes in himself. Okay? So this hand up, handsome dude, okay, let's say he represents Hertz. And Hertz comes our way. So, Pastor Cooper, please lift him up. All right, thank you. See how easily he lifted him up? Sometimes that's what happens to us. We get hurt. Sometimes we get apologized to, so we are okay, you know. And sometimes you're able to brush the head off. It's okay. I mean, you hurt me. I apologize. Okay, next time, you know, it's okay. It's okay. And so I let it go. But if I don't let it go, if I don't let the head go, and you hurt me again, or other people start hurting me, it becomes something else. And so the hurt moves. It becomes anger. And then please lift Jeffrey up. You see, he has to turn him a little bit because Jeffrey is a little heavier than him. And so anger is more heavier than hurt. Because I didn't do, do, deal with the hurt, now it's getting... <laughs> you right? And then, and then, and then they, so this is hurt. When you don't deal with hurt, it grows. It gets established. It grows more and it becomes more stronger. That is anger. Now the anger gets to resentment. I didn't deal with the anger. Now I, I have resentment against you. And so when I see you, I don't want to look at your face. I'm very angry with you. I'm very, you know, the, the resource of the hurt has developed into anger and resentment. I don't want to have anything to do with you. You get me? What's the faces he's making over there? But you see, it was easy to deal with the anger, with the hurt. That's my point. It was a little easier with the anger, but because he didn't. So when you deal with anger, you deal with hurt, you won't get to anger. When you deal with anger, you won't get to resentment. You get to resentment, you know how to, he, has, he has to stabilize himself to be able to carry him. And now that resentment, if the resentment is not dealt with, it gets into bitterness. He's like, I'm not going to try. That's how it is. Bitterness is so heavy, we can't even carry it. Can you just imagine if he was carrying hurt on him? And then anger on him. And then resentment on him. No, he can't even carry bitterness. If all these things are on him, can he survive? This is what happens to us if we don't forgive people. We carry all this on us. And so, how can he do exploits if he's carrying all this baggage on him? How can he do exploits when all these things are on him? So you are shouting, I want to do exploits. I'm a woman of exploits. I'm fasting and praying. Every Friday you are here praying. Every Wednesday you are here praying. But you are carrying all this load. How can you do exploits with this? And so before you can do exploits, you have to get rid of all these things. And I pray that, that we'll be able to do that before we leave here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Please put your hands together for them. And so I pray that we'll be able to let go when people hurt us. The Bible says offenses will come. That means it will come. No matter what you do, whether you are good or bad, it will come. But when that offense comes, what do you do with it? If somebody offends you, what do you do with it? If somebody hurts you, what do you do with it? Do you get angry forever? Do you hold on resentment? Do you say that's what this I'll never forgive? I mean, who are you? God himself forgive us. You know, in the Lord's prayer that we say every day, he said, forgive them their debts. Us. So, it's imperative that you will be forgiven when you forgive. You don't want to forgive, but you want God to forgive you your sins. It doesn't work like that. It's easier said than done. We want to be here, you want to preach, you want to jump. But please, learn to forgive in your heart. Whoever forgave you, by the end of this sermon, we will come here and we pray. Let them go. Tell them, take your baggage, hurt, go. Anger, go. Resentment, go. Bitterness, go. I don't need you. Amen. Amen. I wrote here, anger, this is something on my heart, so I really, <clears throat> head is just a feeling pain, right? And anger is the outlet of that hurt. So angry people are all hurt. And so they want to, you know, express that, that, that hurt. Anger is just a situation, but bitterness generates from past situations, which has not been found which has not found solution 
and it's of letting go. So anger is short-lived, but bitterness, or anger is short reaction, but bitterness is sustained reaction. Whatever happens, you pile it up. Today, I didn't smile at you. You check me. Okay, you. You put me on your blacklist. Tomorrow, I step on your foot. Another check. So before the day ends, I'm on your top black, red, blue, and all list. How will you be blessed? How will you do exploits with all this? I know you've been hurt and it hurts. I know you've been through things that you didn't want to. But I pray that today the Lord himself will touch you and make a way for you where there seems to be no way. So it starts with anger, hurt. It goes to anger, resentment, and bitterness. But I pray that that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Something that I said in the morning is that anger is loud. Hurt is loud. You see it. But bitterness is silent. And so you may be walking with people, you'll be smiling with people, but they are embittered. And that's the serious or the dangerous part. They are embittered and you don't know that they are embittered. And so they smile with you, but are they... They want to cut your head. They smile with you, but they don't wish you well. They smile with you, but that thing that you did, they look at you and they remember. I pray that God will bring us to that place where we will let go. I know it's a process, but I also know that it's a decision that you have to make. Like the Bible said that do not let any unholy word come out of your mind. It's a decision. You have to decide that I will not say it. If you say it's a process, you will stay there forever. But decide that no. Christ already, listen, the thing is that Christ already took that pain away. Christ already took that shame away. Christ already took that work that you have to work out to get to that point of saying it's a process. He already took it away. And so all he's giving, he's giving you that power to say that Eunice, now you have been hurt, but I have given you that power to rise and say that you hurt me, but I will not remain there. You hurt me, but I will not stay there. You hurt me, but I will not be offended. Why? Because you've been given that power. And so rise above that and be the man or the woman God has made you to be. What you have to understand is that when you stay there, you are the one who is losing. You are the one who will stay there forever. You are the one who will open your book. Listen, we all fail the exams. I tell myself, okay, I'm done with it. I'm going to study. And I focus and I concentrate. I'll pass the exam. You, 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 you still remain there. You're like, oh, I didn't deserve to fail. It was the professor's fault. It was this professor. You blame everybody but yourself. And so as you're sitting there reading, nothing is getting registered. Why? Because you are angry with everybody. Have you realized that angry people, offended people still remain where they are? They don't progress. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want you to progress. But I pray that the Lord will open your eyes and you will rise up out of it and be who God has called you to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 to 20. What do you do when you're offended? What do you do when you're offended? Let's all read. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him you and him alone. So when somebody offended you, the first thing to do is to go to that person alone. Don't tell the whole world before you come to him. I did something against you. We haven't even talked. The hope everybody knows. It's on social media. It's here. It's, I, knew, I mean, you speak in parables and everybody knows that this is the person you're talking about. So the right way to do it the right way Jesus taught us is to go to that person. If I did something against you, please come to me. Come to me. I don't buy it. Let's resolve it. Let's be who God created us to be. That's what the Bible is telling us. Go to that person alone. And the scripture continues that, please go back to the scripture. And then it says that, but if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, Every word may be established. Amen? We quote this word, oh, by the mouth of three witnesses, every word is established. So you pray. Two, you call times for people to pray so that whatever you are believing God for will be established in Jesus' name. But then when they hurt you and you talk to them and they, they don't listen, why can't you call, okay, Sister Michelle, Sister, um, come, come, let's go. Let's talk about this. Years ago, something happened here. I did something for someone out of a good heart. I mean, I didn't think about anything. I, it, was, it was good that I did. But the person didn't want it. And so 
I spoke to an elderly person. He said, oh, this, this will be nice. It's somebody that has served me. So I thought that it would be nice I, in my heart. And it was a good thing. It wasn't a bad thing. But the person didn't want it. And she had told people she didn't want it. And so when I did it, the person felt offended. And I didn't know. I thought because I had spoken to an elder person, she said, oh, do it. It's nice. I didn't know the person was so upset with me. I did not know. And so when I got to know about it, I, I called the person. The person was like, it's okay. I said, no. So I called two of the women leaders. I called them to my office. And when they, I said, this is what happened. I want you to tell the sister that I didn't do anything to spite her. It was from my heart. And I have consulted an older person, my mother in the Lord. And she said, you need to go ahead and do it. I told her, I want you to say, go ahead and do it. So I did that for the individual. It wasn't anything to spite you. I didn't know. But I'm very sorry if that's how you felt. And I apologize. The person is okay. I said, no, I've heard everything going around. So I'm very sorry. I could have, you know, also tell people that, no, this is what happened. No, I called her and I apologized to her. She didn't come. She said, oh, no, I wasn't upset. I said, I've heard it. I wasn't angry. I've heard it. And so I realized that you didn't like it. I'm sorry. It's past, but I'm sorry. Forgive. Find it in your heart to forgive me. And she said, okay. And praise God, everybody went about their businesses. And we are all laughing. And everybody is having their peace. You get me? So instead of going about telling people, call the person. If the, it's not, it doesn't work, call two people. Let them be a witness to what you are saying so that at least you know you did that right thing. And then number three, just about the fact that if it doesn't happen, let the church know. Let the church know. And so number one, go to the person alone. Number two, Take one person with you. Number three, tell the leadership for resolution. And number four, if it doesn't work, just treat the person gently like a, a, a task collector. Just leave the person alone. You know, don't be mean, but you, you tried your best. All right? So just, just do your part. For, for me, what, all I'm saying is that do your part and make sure that you have resolved it. How do you overcome offenses? Number one, admit it. Admit, admit that you are offended. Admit that you are offended. Number two, acknowledge. Acknowledge that you're offended. Number three, address it. You, have, you can't pretend that it never happened. No. To overcome an offense, you have to admit it. You have to acknowledge it and you have to address it. Don't ignore the offense. Admit it. Number two, don't exaggerate it. Don't go on social media. You know, don't publicize it. Don't let everybody know that this is what... No. Try as much as you, you can to resolve it. Number three, don't abandon the conflict. Seek to resolve it. Try and resolve issues. Number four, don't fence yourself by the conflict. Don't, don't be imprisoned by the conflict. Make sure you talk about the conflict. And once it's resolved, please let it go. Don't kind of, you know, put more oil to it. Don't kind of um, make it worse. Don't recycle it. Don't, it's been resolved. Don't go and bring it up. Oh, do you remember what? No, please. Let, let, let sleeping dogs. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Know that offenses will come. But when it comes, how are you going to resolve it? Know that you, you know, we live in a community. And what goes around, come around. It does. And so if you don't take care, you think you are being bossy. You think you People talk. But I pray that we will find it in our heart to let it go, to forgive. Amen. The Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, it said the question, that is what we struggle with most of the time. That how often, how often should I forgive? What was Jesus' reply? How often should you forgive? 70 times 70. That means that forgive every time they offend you. Learn to forgive. Forgiveness is freedom. Amen. Forgiveness is freedom because offenses, in actual fact, offenses cloud your vision. Offense will cloud your vision. Offen offenses will affect your thinking. It will, when you are offended, your vision is clouded. It affects your thinking. It affects your reasoning power. And so you are not able to do exploits, right? Because you can't even think far. You can't think far. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 20, verse 4, 
Put Psalm chapter 20 verse 4 for me. Psalm 20 verse 4. The book of Psalms chapter 20 verse 4. It says, may God grant you according to your heart desires and fulfill all your purposes. When you are able to let go and forgive people, God grants your heart desires and he fulfills all your purposes. But when you don't, your, your, your mental state is clouded and you can't think straight. You can't do things right because you are angry. You are offended. They did something to you. They hurt you so bad. Yes. You, you're sick. You're trying. You, like the woman, the woman with the issue of blood. I mean, she, she, she spent all her money. She had every cause to be angry. But when she heard that there was healing, Jesus had a healing, she said that I may touch the helm of Jesus' garment. I pray that we will come to that level knowing that it is only God that can save us. So it doesn't matter how offended we are, we will leave it and allow God to have his way in our lives. Amen? Amen. When you are offended spiritually, you are dead. Your spirit man dies. And when your spirit man is dead, you don't hear from God clearly. Sometimes we think we are hearing from God. It is not God speaking to you, my dear. It is your own spirit. Which God, which Holy Spirit will tell you to retaliate when somebody offends you? Which Holy Spirit will tell you to curse the person back? Which Holy Spirit will tell you to do them, to them the same thing? That No. Forgive. And when you forgive, the Bible says that you heap burning coals of fire on them. And like I said, don't give them room to rent without paying anything. So spiritually, things that affect us when we, we, we carry on offenses, spiritually we die and mentally our mind is unstable. You develop paralyzed emotions. Your emotions are paralyzed. You can't, you know, you can't do the right thing. Physically, you are sick. Medical science tells us, and even in, in counseling, they tell us, there's, a, there's a, one of the, the, the temperaments is, is very gloomy. The melancholics, they are very gloomy. It's like they keep to themselves. They don't want, they keep everything in their heart. And when you, when, when you, you, you read so much into it, most melancholics are sick. The high blood pressures, the, 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 the diabetes, the, the, all the other, the back pain, the waist pain, the, the le listen, it's from your heart and it transfers there. So you think you're having a leg pain, you think you're having a back pain, a waist pain. It is the unforgiveness. It is the offense that has been translated into that. So I pray that Jehovah will touch your heart, that you will let go. We learned it in counseling. The melancholists are sick. They have they, a lot of melancholists have, have high blood pressures. And melancholists are so intellectual. They, they're so smart. But they can't forgive. The thing is that they take, it takes them a long time to trust you. And so when they trust you, it's like they, they just trust you. So when you disappoint them, it really hits them. But the other side of it, and that is where Christian counseling comes in, that that is a trait of a melancholic. But with Christ in you, that's the hope of glory. So you stand up and you say that this is what is written, but this is not me. So I will rise above it in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we will not be sick. We will not be mentally, you know, paralyzed. And we will not die spiritually. But our voices, our, the Lord will hear us. We will tune our spiritual man to God. Unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentments affect you more than you know. Why do we fail to forgive people who offend us? Why? Why do you think we don't forgive people who offend us? Number one, pride. Pride. If he does not, if he or she does not apologize to me, I will not forgive them. You want everybody to apologize to you. Meanwhile, you don't want to apologize to anyone. Look at how mean you've been to God. Look at how you've been disobedient to God. If God should, <laughs> you want people to apologize to you, my dear. And sometimes we even give you the apology, but you are not happy. If you don't have a good place with God, actually, if you have the Holy Ghost, the real Holy Ghost on the inside of you, you can't have more bitterness. You can't because it's like, I mean, the Holy Ghost will drill you. You can't have more bitterness. How are you going to hear from him if you are harboring things against your brother or your sister? So forgive. 
Holding on to offenses gives us a sense of power over the offender. Control and manipulation. That is why we don't forgive. I'm talking about why we do fail to forgive others. Number three, we become heartless. We choose to ignore the word of God. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you, but you want to do your own thing. And so you can't forgive. And then number four, we like to play victim. We need sympathy from people. What happens when, when you forgive? The heavens are opened unto you. We have this story about Ahitophel. How many of you have heard of Ahitophel in the Bible? Ahitophel was, um, he was, he was David's friend. And the Bible said that Ahitophel, when he gives his counsel, his counsel was like the counsel of God. And then Ahitophel had a son called Eliam. And Eliam had a daughter called Bathsheba. So Bathsheba, you know the story. Bathsheba was bathing and David saw her. And long story short, David slept with her. David impregnated her. And so, you open your mouth. It's in the Bible. Read it. <laughs> it's in the Bible. That thing's in the Bible, I tell you. Everything going on is in the Bible. So David impregnated them. Meanwhile, David, God said that David is a man after my own heart. You know why God says that? Because anytime David sins and he goes to God and he asks for forgiveness, David doesn't go back to the sin again. But you and I, we've asked for forgiveness for 200 times and we are still doing the same thing. How can God say that you are a woman after his own heart. I pray that we'll get there. So back to my story. Ahitophel. Bathsheba is Ahitophel. So Ahitophel's granddaughter is Bathsheba. David impregnated Bathsheba. The whole can even us, we are reading about it. So you can just imagine. You don't want anybody to know your problem. Now it's in the Bible. You are reading it. You are comfortable. You can just imagine how it happened. And when it happened, after impregnating her, he sent his husband who was a warrior, to, it's like he told him to, he gave him a letter, take you to your bosses. And in that letter, he said they should put him in the front line so that he would be killed. So he just wanted to cover his sin. You know how sin is? When you sin, you always want to cover up. You don't want anybody to, do, to know that you've sinned. You want to cover up. And so that's how it, it starts little by little. And so David thought he was covering up. But at the end of the day, they killed Uriah. So now he's a murderer now. He impregnated, impregnated somebody's wife. Because, I mean, adultery. And now he's a murderer. He killed a person. And that daughter was Ahitophel's granddaughter. And Ahitophel was David's friend. Just imagine your friend doing something like this to you. And Ahitophel didn't say anything to David. He said, oh, King David. Oh, King David. He got hurt, angry resentful, and he became embittered. And so David was walking with him and all that, but he was embittered. That's what happens so many times. We walk with our friends. When they do something to us and we don't talk about it, we get embittered. You hear, you serve, you've done everything. You want to be somewhere, you don't get it. And because of that, you are so embittered, but you are still serving. You're smiling with everyone. You are, you are clapping, you are praying here, you are doing, but you are embittered. If you don't deal with that bitterness, it will end in murder. Maybe you will not take a, 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 a knife and stab me, but you stab me in the back. And so you are killing me. You are tarnishing my image. You are telling everybody Eunice is this. You are telling everybody this one is that. You are saying bad things about the people that helped you to be where you are. You are killing them. Spiritually and emotionally. And so when the person hears it, they are crushed to the bone. And sometimes it's even not true what you hear. Have you taken time to ask what happened? And so Ahitophel did not address it. But guess what? Years down the line, David's son, Absalom, turned against his father. And then Absalom pronounced himself king. Now David was still alive. And Absalom said he's king. So now they went after David. They wanted to kill David, his father. And David had to run away. The Bible says he, the king ran away on foot. And guess who was the first to join Absalom? Ahitophel. Ahitophel, David's closest friend. And David knew that Ahitophel counsel, when he says it, it's like God speaking. So he said, he prayed a prayer. And he said, God, he heard that Ahitophel is with Absalom. And he knew that 
He used to work with, uh, I don't know if you're getting the story. Like I've, I've worked with, with Minister Andrew. He knows my moves. He knows everything. And now I did something for Miss Andrew to be angry. And Miss Andrew teamed up with my enemy. I will put my hand on my head. Because I know he knows every move. He can kill me easily. And so they went, to, and then Ahitophel, David said that. He knows that when Ahitophel speaks, it's like God speaking. So David went on his knees. My darling, when you are faced with circumstances that you can't handle, go on your knees. David went on his knees and he prayed and he said, Oh God, turn the counsel of Ahitophel into foolishness. And so Ahitophel gave the counsel, but because of the prayer David prayed, it was turned into foolishness. So Absalom didn't take it. And now when Absalom didn't take it, because Ahitophel was full of himself, and he knew that when he talks, it's like God talking, and everybody takes his counsel. Now that Absalom didn't take it, he got angry. He got embittered. He was resentful. He went home. The Bible says he puts his stuff in order and went to hang himself and died. That's what happened. When you have bitterness so much, you think you are killing the other person, but you also end up dying. So you might not die physically, but emotionally you are dead. You don't hear from God. You are sick. You come harboring all sorts of sickness. They, they can't even retreat. When you go to the doctors, they don't know what is wrong with you. They've run every test and they don't know what is wrong with you. My dear, it's the bitterness. It's the offenses. Yes, the boy left you. Let him go. Yes, the girl, let him go. Yes, your husband, let him go. Ask God for grace. They did not treat you right. Your job, your, whatever it is, your, your mother, your father, your friends, whatever it is, let it go. Somebody shall let it go. And let God have his way in your life. Today, my question to you is who has offended you? Who has offended you? Forgive them totally. Is it your parent? Is it your boyfriend? Is it your girlfriend? Is it the one who violated you? Is it your former church? Is it your prison church? Is it a friend who betrayed and spilled all your sins? Is it your ex? Let him go. That one, that one, let them go. Because the interesting thing is that they will see, you give yourself some few years, they will see you at a place and they cannot even come close. And you will thank God that you left them. Actually, you will thank God that they left you. Because in their living you, you rose above that. And you pursued the things that you thought you can't pursue. Because they always thought, told you, you can't do it. But now that they are not in your life, you shook it off. And you go up there. And that's, that will be your story. That's how God is going to make you. Hallelujah. So today I pray. That you forgive and be free. Break the fence and break out in freedom. You don't have to continue to live in that bondage. Make a list of your top three hurts. Right now, make it. Mental list on your phone, whatever. Make a list of your top three hurts. And ask yourself, who must I forgive to relieve these offenses? Let the spirit of the Lord search you. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, 27, that the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. And so the candle of the Lord, the spirit of God is in you. Let the spirit of God in you search you and show you who you are holding stuff against. Who are you offended? Another story in the, in, in the Bible that I shared during the first service was Tamar. Tamar was um, the same King David. King David's son was Ammon. And then Absalom, Absalom that I shared about was another son. And then Absalom had a sister called Tamar. Ammon got so infatuated with the sister that he slept with her. And the sister said, don't sleep with me. The, the Bible doesn't even say slept. He said the, he raped her. And in the morning I said, this rape thing it started long ago. He raped her. And the Bible said that she said, don't. And after, after raping her, the Bible said he disgusted her. How can you do that? You defiled me and after that disgusting me. Jesus. But after all that, according to the Bible, because of that, the woman didn't get married. She had every cause to be offended. 
When the, she went home, Absalom, that's Absalom's sister, she took her home. She said, is that, is that what my brother did? He said, okay. And the Bible said, that is, that is I think, 2 Samuel chapter 13. And the Bible said that after two years, Absalom told King David, King David, I want all my brothers to have dinner with me. He said, why? Come to, he said, no. In the nutshell, they have dinner. And at the dinner, he gave instruction that they, would kill, they should kill his brother Ammon. And they killed him. Why? Because of offense. He was offended and embittered, yet he smiled with his brother. Do you think if Ammon knew that Absalom was offended with him, he would have gone? He wouldn't. That's what we do. We smile with people. We laugh with people. But we are offended. And we say bad things behind their back. And we are killing them slowly. We are killing and bringing out the church of Jesus Christ. What you don't know is that Jesus shed his blood for the church. The person sitting next to you, the blood of Jesus brought them here. The person sitting behind you, every single individual sitting here was brought here by the spirit of the living God. And because you're offended, you go about and you say negative, negative things to them. You say things that are not right to them. You crush them. My dear God would ask you. When you're offended, learn to let it go. Because if not, and you bring the church of Christ down, the Lord will deal with you. This morning, I don't want that to happen to you. People go about, you know, I was telling the people this morning that, listen, before I came to stand here, I have to pray, I have to do this, I have to do that. Nobody, I mean, the choir, they have to rehearse. Everybody have to go through something before they get here. And so you stand here and do all this. And then because of your anger or because of your offense, you want to kind of project everything on people and bring them down. The church of Jesus Christ cannot be brought down. And so let us all stand together and rise and build the church up to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Who has offended you? Please decide to walk in forgiveness. Don't keep telling others about what they did to you. Let them save face. And above all, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for the spouse that is causing you to bleed every day in your heart. Pray for your children that are hurting you. And as children, pray for the parents that are abusing you. Pray for children hurting because of parental abuse. Pray for people that, 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 because of, you know, absentee fathers, absentee mothers, because of divorce. We want to lift our voice and we want to pray. So many of us find ourselves in that. Some of us didn't have fathers when we were growing up. Some of us, our mothers were not there. Sometimes our parents are even there, but they are not there. Because we are working, we're trying to get money, and you need us, and we are not there. And so you are angry at us. Sometimes we don't even know, but you are embittered. You, you, you don't even want to see our face. But you smile with us, and we don't know what is going on. I pray that today the Lord will touch your heart. Please be on your feet. Praying for all relationships. Praying for marriages. Praying for families. We're going to pray. We're going to break every spirit of offense in the church. Every spirit of offense in our heart, we want to pray. If you are holding anything against anyone, it could be your parents, it could be, please, any offense in your heart, you want to connect to the altar and ask, Holy Spirit, help me. I'm offended. Help me. You have every cause to be offended. Ask for the help of God. Ask him to help you. Ask him, ask him. Listen, there are more people than this. There are more people. Ask God. Please let it go. It's hard. Yes, yeah, sometimes you don't want to let it go. You have every, every cost. Sometimes you feel like your, 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 your control is being taken from you because that is what you hold on to. That you will manipulate against them because you're, you're, you were molested, because they did this to you, because they raped you, because they did it. No, you can break out of it. Break out, break out, break out, break out. In the name of Jesus, break out. Whatever caused anything that you are offended with, break out of it in Jesus' name.